So using PowerShell to install the SNMP service on a Windows server, that's pretty simple. First step, you want to enter into a PowerShell session if it's a remote computer. I'm working on my local computer here, so I'm going to skip that step. But all you need to do is use the install Windows feature commandlet to install the SNMP dash service. And then if you need the RSAT tools, you can specify those as well. And this will take a minute to run. And what we're looking for to know that it was successful is a success equal to true and an exit code of success. So once we have it installed, uh, there's a couple of things we need to configure, primarily the managers. So these are the remote hosts that will be able to access the SNMP service. And I've got two of them that I want to use here foo.techsnips.local and bar.techsnips.local. I'm going to assign this to the managers variable. So to add these managers in, we need to add them to the permitted managers registry key, specifically giving them each a name, which is the a number. And number one, it already starts out with local hosts. So we have to start with two. So you can see 12, um, I'm setting I equal to two. And then for each of those managers, I'm adding a new item property using line 14, new item property. And the name I'm setting to the I value. So the first one's going to be two and the value is going to be that first manager. And then of course the second one will be three. And then if you had any more than that, uh, you would get more. So if we run through this, we can look at this output and see that number three was set to bar.techsnips.local and number two was set to foo.techsnips.local. And so then of course the next thing you want to set is the community strings. So this is of course the access control for SNMP. And one thing with SNMP is the access control is again stored in the registry, but read only access is not just read only access. There's actually a number assigned to that. And I don't know about you, but I always have to look it up. So we're going to set this up in such a way that we can specify um, RO to be read only. So you can see I'm creating a, an array of two different hash tables here to create two separate community strings. One is for read only, which I'm calling RO and another one's for read write and I'm calling it RW. But read only doesn't resolve to four and read write doesn't resolve to eight, but that's where we can have another for each loop and then do a switch statement based on the property rights. And so in this case, you can see in the case of read only, I'm setting the value to be four and then read write value of eight. And then for each of those, I have to add them to the valid communities registry key and give the community a name. So in this case, you can see I have string and dot name. So if we scroll back up and look at our string, so the, the name here, first one will be RO, second will be RW. And then the value, of course, will be that value that I grabbed out of the switch statement. So if we run, oh, we had, actually have to add in the strings variables well. So if you run this segment, uh, we should see that we've got two things created. First of all is going to be RO, which is equal to four, which is exactly what we wanted. And then RW, which is equal to eight. And of course, you don't have to use RO and RW. You can call them whatever you want. But just for a demo, easy to explain, RO is read only, RW is read write. If we pull up our services MMC snap in here, we'll go down to the SNMP service. So this is what shows up when SNMP is installed. And if we open up the properties of the SNMP service, we go to the security tab, you can see that we have our two community strings that we created. So RO, which has read only writes, and RW, which has read write writes. And then of course, down below it, we have our permitted managers. Uh, you can see local host is added in by default, and then we have our foo and our bar. So, but that's not always very easy to remember. So we wrote a function called install SNMP. And this function takes a couple of parameters. First is the computer name. And of course, it'll be the computer name to install on. And the second is permitted managers. And the managers, of course, the host that we want to allow access to the SNMP service. And then our community strings. And this is going to be a hash table. So it's going to be the same style of hash table we used before. I'll show you how to use it here in a second. And then if the credentials are any different than what is currently being used in the current PowerShell session, there's a, a credential option as well. And you notice that the only mandatory parameter here is the computer name parameter, so that you know any of the other ones can be nothing if, if you don't want to add any permitted managers or community strings. The first thing we're doing is we're setting our error action preference to be stop. Uh, and then we're doing that in case the install Windows feature fails, then it'll, it will just stop and, of course, let us know. So we've got everything wrapped in a try block here. And the first thing we're creating is a script block. So you can see here that I'm actually assigning the script block to the script block variable. And that's so that I can use it in the invoked command commandlet uh, down at the end of the script. I'll show you that here in a second. And then I'm going to be using the verbosity uh, that is passed to the base function here. So that's where that using comes into play. And the first thing we're doing is the same install Windows feature. We saw that before. 
And then if there are any managers, we're gonna set those. We saw this one before too. We're starting at two, adding them all in. And then the same thing with the community strings. So if there are any community strings, we're gonna add them in and then set the registry path there, line 56. And then down here at the bottom, this is where the magic happens. This is where we have our invoke command. And the parameters here have got splatted. Uh, so we're getting the computer name from the computer name variable, the script block, which is the script block that we just created, and then whether or not there is verbose output, which is where the verbose preference comes into play. And then if there is a credential, then we're gonna add that credential in as with the credential property here. And of course, we're gonna invoke that command. And here line 72, if there are any errors, I'll put them. So let's add that function into our current session here. And to be able to use it, here's the syntax. So of course, line 66, we've got our computer name for the computer name parameter. I've got our permitted managers, and you notice I'm just adding in one. We can add as many or as few as you'd like. And then our community strings. Uh, so this takes a hash table, and you can see that I'm just creating one. So this is one of the two I had before as examples. I'm creating one called RO that has the rights of read only. And if you want to create more of these, you can, of course, add in more. And I'm also specifying verbose that, so that we get verbose output. All right, so if we go ahead and run this command, we should be getting some verbose output there. And I'm actually going to take this up. It's a little bigger here. So there we go. We got started installing the SNMP service, setting permitted manager, and setting community strings. And so you can see that it was all successful. The last thing we can do is, of course, connect to that remote computer and verify that that service is running. So if we use the uh, services as MMC snap-in, and you can see that I'm now connected to DNS01, we'll go down to the SNMP service, look at the properties and the security tab, and there you can see that we've got just one community string and then one extra permitted manager. Thanks for watching.